Asian beauty or lion's mane? So when you think of Asian beauty and lion's mane, you probably think <laughs> gorgeous, <laughs> warm, um, and the, the gorgeous lion's mane. However, we're going to be talking about mushrooms. Um, so on the left is Asian beauty and on the right is lion's mane. Um, as you can tell, they look similar, uh, not quite exactly the same, but they do look very similar. So I made the mistake um, this maybe last fall, but definitely this uh, summer and fall, um, or mainly this fall, of misidentifying Asian beauty with lion's mane. I thought Asian beauty was a young, um, younger beginning growth of the lion's mane mushroom. However, thanks to Bruce and his app that uh, identified um, the mushroom, we found out it's Asian beauty and I look, had to look up more about it. So uh, the picture on the right, I took at, um, the picture on the right, I took at Destruction Brook Woods. So um, they are growing here in uh, on our properties. I've seen them on several properties um, in in Dartmouth and in the South Coast area. I also have seen it in Rhode Island as well. Not, I can't, can't remember exactly where in Rhode Island, but definitely in um, my section of Tiverton and Little Compton. I'm not sure if I've seen it. Um, west of Providence or south of Providence. So how do you um, identify Asian beauty? So Asian beauty, um, you're going to find it growing in the cracks of the bark on um, hardwood logs. They have these white to pale spines that grow 8 to 12 millimeters long. So they're very tiny. They're very short. As um, the fruiting body uh, matures, it turns yellow, and then once the body dries, um, it becomes a more red-brown color. Um, this is a crust fungi, so the mushroom is going to grow along against the bark of the log, and it's going to spread out into all those cracks and crevices um, in the bark. It is also a tooth fungi, and it has a waxy coating as well. This species of um, mushroom is a white rot species, which means it decomposes the lignin in the tree. So this is a decomposing fungi um, that um, in Asia was uh, evolved to help break down the trees in, um, in like China and places like that over there. Um, but now it's brought over here and who knows whether or not it's going to have a negative effect. Whether it's going to help decomposing all the trees. <laughs> as compete some of the native species, we're not sure. So this, uh, the Asian beauty um, fruits in late summer through the winter. So there's a huge mystery uh, surrounding the Asian beauty. It was first reported in 2009 in Ipswich um, by um, a scientist. Um, and we're kind of puzzled. Everyone's really puzzled because it seemed to spread very quickly and very fast. But we're not sure if, if it's A, actually spreading really quickly or fast, or B, we misidentified it and called it something else for years. And finally, in 2009, um, the right person found it and identified it um, using the more scientific tools like um, looking at the DNA and the RNA of it to actually identify. Um, like I said, it's native to Asia. Um, we're not sure how it came over here. Um, it could have come over. Um, centuries ago through um, 
through um, horticultural gardens. Um, there's a nice, um, there's near Ipswich, there is a, um, there, oh, I think that is a beautiful um, garden that was built in the 1800s. And um, they did bring over some Asian um, trees and uh, or uh, rhododendrons from Asia. And those rhododendrons could have brought the fungus over with them um, and then maybe got misidentified or maybe it did come over in 2009 or before 2009 and has um, <coughs> along the Eastern. It's definitely in the Northeast, um, but there are places in like Pennsylvania um, and South like that um, that have this. So the main question that we're, we have as um, land managers is, is it bad? Is it gonna be harmful? Is it gonna displace native, um, native rare or threatened fungi species? Um, we're not sure. Since it's a decomposer, um, decomposing fungi, um, the worst that, um, that we know of that it could do is displace um, those native rare and threatened species. Um, but examples of other type of inv invasive fungi are um, pathogenic fungi, which creates the, um, which are the fungi that um, is the chestnut blight, the white uh, pine blister rust, and, rust and the Dutch elm disease. Um, so those are the examples of the pathogenetic um, fungi, which um, kill trees. Um, and then there's the mycorrhizal uh, fungi, which are the ones that have a symbiotic relationship with trees. So those tend to spread when um, you create tree um, or spread into non-native areas when you have a tree plantation, like in the south with the pines. Um, a lot of the time, the, when you plant all those trees, you're gonna, you're gonna bring in those mushrooms. So that way they have that symbiotic relationship and they take care of one another. Um, the mushroom is able to give some nutrients to the tree that the tree needs while the tree helps provide um, shelter and other nutrients for the, um, the fungi to grow and how the, the mycorrhizal fungi become invasive or aggressive is when they um, leave the tree plantations and go to the surrounding forest mm -hmm. and then they create new relationships with the um, with tree species um, that are in the native in that native um, forest whether or not that is a bad thing or a good thing, we're still not certain. Um, like um, it could also displace native rare or threatened species. Um, so when you're out walking in the woods, you can still find this um, Asian beauty today. Um, again, you're gonna look for something that's gonna grow um, against the bark in the crevices and um, cracks, and it's going to have these small uh, spines that point downward. Um, they're white and can, um, as they age and mature, it goes from yellow to a red brown. Um, so if you're out walking the trails, just uh, let me know when you see them. So that way um, we can make a, a note of where this um, fungus is and maybe we can um, over time monitor it and see how it's going to affect the forest here. Hey Leah, what, yeah. is, what does flowering mean for something like that? So um, mushrooms, when you see the, the mushroom body itself, that's called the fruiting body because that's actually the uh, reproduction organ of the, um, the fungus. Fungus mainly, um, the main body of it is actually uh, these mycorrhizomes and um, more smaller microscopic or micro um, hyphae and such like that that are live um, in the, the tree itself or in the soil or wherever or the rocks or 
um, where the mushroom is growing. And you don't see it normally during uh, throughout the year. Um, and you only see the mushroom when it's actually fruits. And so these fruiting bodies here will release spores, um, which will then allow new mushrooms to grow. Okay. Um, so a lookalike um, to Asian Beauty is Lion's Mane, um, which is this mushroom right here. As you can tell, it has much longer uh, spikes that point downward as well. Um, it's also, um, it's unbranching, so it grows in a um, more of a globe shape. Um, when the Asian Beauty was branching, it, it just spread across the, the bark of the tree, while this one is going to just stay one, sh one spot and kind of just get bigger and bigger into a nice globe. Um, so these um, spines are one to six centimeters long, so they're a lot larger than um, the Asian Beauty spines, which again were in the millimeters, while this isn't in the centimeters. Um, so they're going to be distinctly or lion's mane is going to be a lot larger than the Asian beauty. Um, again, as this matures, um, this one's going to turn into a yellow-brown color as it ages. And as it ages is when it um, becomes mature and the spores release. And then after the spores release, the fruiting body will um, die away because its job is done. Um, and they'll create new um, fruiting bodies every year. Um, and lion's mane can be found on the wounds of living trees and down logs. It prefers oaks and beeches, but will grow on other hardwood, hardwoods. Uh, lion's mane is also a white rot decomposer, so it also helps break down the ligaments in the tree. And this one fruits um, late, uh, late summer through the fall. So you're not gonna find lion's mane now in the winter but you will find um, lion's mane and Asian beauty growing both in the fall. <laughs> lion's does have, um, it's edible. Um, a lot of people, um, <laughs> this is one of the prime um, uh, foraging mushrooms to get. It tastes somewhat like lobster, shrimp, or fish. <laughs> I, haven't, like fish. I haven't tried it yet, uh, but <laughs> after I learned tastes like lobster and shrimp. I'm a little hesitant to uh, try it, cooking it at least. Um, but I will at least try it once. Not a huge lobster or, fit, or shrimp fan. All other seafood I love, um, but those two. Uh, but uh, the medicinal uses for lion's mane is, uh, it, it is an enhancement of your cognitive abilities. Um, it helps um, increase your memory, um, your mood, your concentration. There have been many um, tests and studies in, in, in a double blind controlled test. Participants um, got a, a pill with lion's mane and then uh, others got the placebo. And at the end of it, they found out that the people who took the lion's mane um, mushroom because um, you can get a powder form, as you can see in this picture, and just take the capsule. Um, those people who consumed the lion's mane scored higher um, on the test than those who took the placebo. Um, lion's mane has been shown to increase the nerve growth. Um, it's shown to help repair damaged neurons and help reduce the symptoms of Alzheimer's. Um, this is not a cure. Um, it is considered alternative uh, medicine, and there is a, a lot of research being um, being done on Lion's Mane to see how it can um, help with your cognitive and other um, mental abilities. And I've been using it. Um, I've been giving my dog Lion's Mane. I got a powder, and I just give her um, a teaspoon of that every day to help with her cancer because she has um, the cancer in the central nervous system. So I thought, hey, mine's main supposed to help with the uh, functions in the brain. So we'll see if maybe it'll help um, with that. So 
who knows if it is helping or not, but um, it can't hurt. Um, yeah, and you can order this. Um, you can get lines made, um, a tea form or um, the capsules, depending on how you want to consume it. You can um, grow it yourself. It's um, one of the more popular um, mushrooms to grow at home, along with the oyster mushrooms. Um, and then you can make the powder yourself or eat it, um, cook it up. It tastes, um, people mainly use it in stir fries or put it in soups and stews. Um, and that's how they eat it. But I, um, does anyone have any questions? Hmm. Are there any particular cultures around the, the world that consume this? all but <laughs> yes so the north well north america at least the uh, united states isn't as big into mushrooms as the rest of the world um a lot of european countries actually um eat, they consume european and asian countries that consume way more mushrooms than um the united states do um there's a lot of like historic or heritage um, traditions passed down through generations. I know um, my Polish ancestors would forage for mushrooms. Um, unfortunately, I, I tr my grandmother and her sister tried to pass down that knowledge, but they didn't really have it. Um, so they kind of tried to improvise because uh, they did it with their grandmother and she was from Poland. Um, so those, it is like a huge family tradition to go out every fall and, and forage for, um, mushrooms and then also in the spring for morels and stuff like that. So the United States is a little weird. Um, it's behind, um, behind like the other countries, but yeah, in the rest of the world, mushrooms are way more common to consume and, um, in Asia, they tend to use a lot of the medicinal use um, from mushrooms. There are quite a bit um, that you can look into. There's like about 10 that are like the key um, medicinal mushrooms, but mushrooms research is very limited um, or it hasn't, there's only it has not been done as much, but there's more research to be done. Like um, for the Asian people, is it invasive? Like how, how is it gonna affect native fungi? Um, uh, fungi, how is it gonna affect native trees that it's decomposing? Is it gonna decompose the trees faster or um, does it decompose it differently or whatnot? So lots of questions, lots of research that needs to be done. Uh, great projects for those who are looking for them. Someone else have a question? I may have interrupted you if you did. Did you say that the Asian beauty is not found on living trees? Um, it, uh, it can be. I think I've seen it growing on living trees. Um, but it tends to grow more on dead trees or, or at least dying trees if it is growing on it because it is a decomposer. So any tree that has like a flesh wound, a flesh wound to its bark where the spores can attack, um, get into that cambium and attack there, um, it will attach and grow and decompose the ligament. Leah, I thought it might be helpful to put maybe put some of your presentations in a in an online folder and send send out links to the committee members. So yes, I am hopefully recording mm -hmm. this now, so that way I can post it later. <laughs> I'm not sure if it works or not. and a folder for them to access. <laughs>